Summary The Happiness of Pursuit, Finding the Quest That Will Bring Purpose to Your Life Chris Gillibo. Book Link Click here here's a summary, the author traveled to Dakar, Senegal as part of his quest to visit every country in the world. He had to wait six hours in the airport for his connecting flight to Guinea-Bissau. Rather than getting a hotel room for a short nap, he decided to stay in the airport. He slept fitfully in an uncomfortable plastic chair, wary of thieves and mosquitoes. He questioned why he chose to put himself in such a difficult situation. The author explained that he started this quest 10 years earlier while working as an aid worker in West Africa. Visiting every country in the world had become his lifelong mission. The trip to Guinea-Bissau would mark his 190th country. Despite the difficulties, he enjoyed the thrill of the adventure. At sunrise, he bought coffee and boarded his 30-minute flight to Guinea-Bissau. Though exhausted, he appreciated the beauty of the coastal scenery below the plane. Upon landing in Guinea-Bissau, there were no airport luxuries, he had to walk down the plane stairs onto the tarmac. But he was happy to have reached his final destination in Africa. In summary, the prologue illustrates the author's dedication to accomplishing his ambitious goal of visiting every country, despite facing discomfort and difficulties along the way. The challenges of the journey seem to make the destination even more rewarding. The writer arrives in Guinea-Bissau, the last of 54 African countries he aimed to visit. After 10 years of traveling to nearly 200 countries, he has only two more to go to complete visiting every country. People have always been fascinated by epic journeys and quests. Stories from various cultures and religions often feature heroes going on difficult journeys and adventures to accomplish something important. Classic literature, movies, TV shows, and video games also frequently feature quests and adventures. The writer discovered that many people around the world pursue quests to give their lives more purpose and meaning. Some undertake long journeys, while others pursue mastery of a skill or activity. Some quests are public while others are private. People join together for some quests, like a family biking 17,300 miles from Alaska to Argentina. The writer wanted to understand why people choose big, difficult quests and what keeps them going. He learned several lessons from his own 10-year quest to visit every country, to achieve the impossible, first imagine it. Understand what's required and find a way. Courage comes from attempting and achieving quests. Success builds confidence and optimism. Quests rarely go as planned. Face challenges and misadventures with humor and patience. Quests can transform you in unexpected ways. You may end up somewhere very different from where you started. Quests eventually end, and you have to figure out what's next. It can be hard to recreate the intensity of pursuing a long-term goal. The writer's curiosity about people's quests became a quest itself. By talking to many people about their quests, he aims to offer guidance for those searching for meaning and purpose. Here is a summary. The author interviewed many people who pursue long-term, meaningful goals or quests to understand their motivations and experiences. Regardless of the specifics of their quests, certain common themes emerged. They had a clear goal and end point. The quest could be articulated in a sentence or two. The quest presented significant challenges and required sacrifice. The questers felt an internal drive or calling to pursue their goal. Progress was made through small, incremental steps over a long period of time. Personal growth was often required. Practical obstacles had to be overcome. The author categorizes quests into types like travel, learning, documenting experiences, and athletic achievements. More broadly, the motivations behind people's quests fall into themes like self-discovery, pushing themselves outside their comfort zone to learn about themselves and the world, reclaiming, recapturing something that was lost or fighting against something unjust. For example, reclaiming cultural heritage or fighting against an establishment, response to events, embarking on a quest in reaction to a pivotal life event like job loss, health issues, global events, etc. A desire for empowerment, seeking independence, control, or proving themselves in the face of doubts or obstacles. The stories show that while quests are deeply personal, they share some commonalities in their motivations and progress. Pursuing a long-term challenging goal can lead to significant life changes and personal growth. Here is a summary. The author argues that discontent or unhappiness can lead to new beginnings and spur people to pursue life-changing quests. He gives the example of Sandy Whedon, who was laid off from her steady job at GM after 12 years. Though the news came as a shock, Whedon decided to view it as an opportunity to pursue her passion for photography. She traveled around the U.S. in an RV for a year, taking photos and building her portfolio. This quest gave her life new meaning and direction. The author says that many people feel a sense of frustration or alienation from their daily lives and jobs. But rather than staying stuck in an unhappy situation, 
people can choose to make big changes through pursuing a quest or new life goal. A quest provides challenge, requires developing new skills, and can help people find purpose and meaning. Some key points, discontent with the status quo can inspire people to pursue life changes and quests. Many people feel frustrated or unfulfilled with their daily lives but choose to stay stuck rather than making changes. A quest can help provide new challenge and meaning. Pursuing a quest requires stepping out of one's comfort zone, developing new abilities, and persevering to accomplish the goal. The quest itself, not just the achievement, provides purpose. Finding and pursuing a quest starts with paying attention to one's interests and dreams, then taking steps to turn ideas into action. A quest is about choosing to create change in one's life rather than passively accepting an unsatisfying situation. With effort and dedication, people can build the lives they want. Here is a summary. Sandy had worked a steady job for 12 years but felt unfulfilled and that she was missing out on adventure. When she was laid off, she saw it as an opportunity to pursue her dream of documenting a road trip along Route 66. She spent six weeks traveling, taking photos, and rediscovering herself. The journey led to a new career as a photographer and tour guide. She says she's glad she took the risk to follow her dream instead of immediately finding another job. Tom, a recent college graduate, felt dissatisfied with the traditional life path in front of him. He turned down a good, secure job offer to instead cycle around the world for a year with friends. Though the trip was difficult, Tom gained confidence and valuable life experiences. He says following your heart is more important than job security. The author wanted to understand why people give up stability and security to pursue uncertain life adventures. The answers often seem circular, focusing on desires for freedom, adventure, and personal growth. But at the core, there seemed to be an inner drive to follow one's passions and a thirst for new experiences that made the risks worthwhile. In summary, the stories show how pivotal life events can prompt people to reflect on what they really want and find the courage to pursue more meaningful life adventures, even at the cost of stability or security. By following their inner compass, people can gain valuable life experiences and discover new purposes or callings. Here is a summary, everyone has a calling or purpose in life. Follow your passion to find your calling. The story of the 12 spies illustrates this. 10 spies were too fearful of the challenges in the promised land and recommended not going. But two spies saw the opportunity and promise and urged the people to proceed. The people listened to the fearful spies and missed out for 40 years. The two descending spies were later able to enter the land. Hannah Pasternak related to the story of the spies. Though attracted to Israel, her ancestral homeland, she had avoided going for various reasons. But after reading the story, she realized she was like the spies who saw the promise but avoided it due to fear. She decided to take a risk and move to Israel, beginning with a months-long hike across the country. Though impacted by learning her family history, she had to choose to respond and act. Preparation helped but the decision to go was most important. She refused to be like the fearful spies. General dissatisfaction and even an impactful event are often not enough to motivate action. You have to choose to respond and act. Hannah prepared but choosing to go was the most critical step. The lesson is that everyone has a calling or purpose, but you have to follow your passion and take action to achieve it. Avoid being like the 10 spies who were too fearful to enter the promised land. Take a risk and pursue your dreams. Hannah felt an irresistible pull to embark on a challenging new opportunity in Israel. Like her ancestors, she had a high tolerance for risk and adventure. Others who have followed unconventional callings describe a similar inexplicable draw to something meaningful beyond their comfort zone. Examples include, Scott Harrison, who founded Charity, Water after traveling to Liberia and realizing the need for clean water. He struggled to articulate his vision at first but eventually built a $100 million organization. John Francis, an environmentalist who decided to stop using motor vehicles and eventually stopped speaking for 17 years to protest oil dependence. At first it was difficult but he came to see it as a taste of freedom and a journey he could not stop. The key is to go big and think unconventionally. Advances often come from unconventional thinkers. Examples of bigger unconventional ideas include becoming a ninja, entering a monastery, or finding a cure for a disease. In the end, everybody has a calling, as Bob Dylan said, whether high or low. The challenge is avoiding distractions and pursuing your passion. Here is a summary. The author discusses how defining moments can change the course of one's life and help determine one's purpose or calling. Revisiting these turning points and asking why certain decisions were made can reveal a lot about someone and their pursuits in life. For Tom Allen from England, his defining moment was turning down a good job offer because he realized he didn't want his life mapped out for the foreseeable future. He wanted more freedom and adventure. For Adam Warner, 
his defining moment was far more tragic. His girlfriend and the love of his life, Megan Baker, was diagnosed with terminal cancer. This changed Adam's perspective and priorities in life. He quit his job to spend more time with Megan in her final months. After she passed away, Adam pursued a long-held goal of theirs to travel across multiple countries. This helped him process his grief and gave him a sense of purpose. Adam's story illustrates how our awareness of mortality can inspire us to pursue meaningful goals and live life fully. Every moment matters. Even though Adam lost Megan, pursuing their travel goal gave him solace and allowed him to honor her memory. The author argues that the most interesting people are often those who make big changes even when things seem to be going well. They create their own freedom and purpose rather than wait for an obvious catalyst. Defining moments come in many forms, but they share the ability to fundamentally change how we see the world and live our lives. The key takeaway is that defining moments shape lives in pivotal ways. Revisiting these turning points can reveal a person's hopes, values, and pursuits. Awareness of life's impermanence inspires us to live meaningfully and follow our purpose. Every moment matters in the pursuit of a well-lived life. Here is a summary. Megan and Adam met while teaching English in South Korea. They bonded over a shared list of life goals and dreams of travel and adventure. A year after meeting, Megan was diagnosed with terminal breast cancer at 26. They moved back to North America for treatment. Adam visited Megan as much as possible and eventually moved to be closer to her. Despite treatment, Megan's cancer spread and she was moved to hospice care. One of her goals was to get married. So Adam and Megan married in a ceremony a month before she died. Adam was devastated after Megan's death but found purpose in pursuing her list of life goals and dreams in her memory. He started a blog to document his progress, traveled, volunteered, and more. Friends say the quest has given him solace and helped him grow. The story highlights how an emotional awareness of mortality can inspire people to live purposefully and pursue what really matters to them. Megan seemed to have this awareness, living fully while she could. Her illness and death led Adam to develop a similar awareness and quest. Other examples of people with an emotional awareness of mortality include, John Francis, who took a vow of silence for 20 years, was sensitive to death from a young age. A health scare reinforced how fleeting life is. Juno Kim left her job in South Korea to travel after seeing her parents battle cancer, realizing we are not young and healthy forever. Phoebe Snetsinger, a suburban Midwestern housewife, became an avid birder at 34 after a awakening moment seeing an orange warbler. After travels to Mexico, the Galapagos, and Kenya, her passion intensified into a full-time quest to see as many bird species as possible while she could. Phoebe Snetsinger was diagnosed with melanoma and given a year to live. She decided to devote the rest of her life to bird watching and set a goal to see as many birds as possible. After surviving longer than expected, she traveled the world going on difficult bird watching expeditions. She set the record for the most birds seen by a woman and aimed to set the overall record. Thomas Hawk is an amateur photographer with a goal to take and publish one million photos in his lifetime. He spends nearly all of his free time taking, editing and sharing photos. He travels frequently to take photos, including visiting the 100 biggest cities in the US. He shares his photos online and has received a lot of feedback. Hawk says what this goal means most of all for me is that I will dedicate a very large portion of my life to creating art. The difference between a hobby and a quest is that you can stop thinking about a hobby but a quest becomes an obsession. A quest gives life meaning and purpose. To live without regrets, you have to pay attention, ask hard questions about what you really want in life, and take action. Phoebe, Thomas and Adam, who is completing his late wife's bucket list, are examples of people living purposeful lives in pursuit of their goals and quests. The key takeaways are, live life fully now instead of saving things for later. Awareness of mortality can inspire us to pursue meaningful goals. Identify your own list of things you want to accomplish in life. Taking action on your goals and quests can help you live without regret. Here is a summary of the passage in my own words. The passage discusses the meaning of self-reliance through the stories of three individuals who pursued their dreams despite facing rejection and obstacles. Laura Decker, a Dutch teenager, had to fight a legal battle against her own government to gain permission to sail around the world alone. Though she did not seek fame or attention, sailing was her passion and she wanted to complete the journey for herself. After winning her court case, she set off on her quest and found freedom being alone at sea. Brian Powell quit his job as a lawyer to build a community and business around ultra running, his passion. He worked extremely hard for over a year to get his project off the ground, often putting in 10 to 14 hours a day. Though it was difficult, he persevered because he believed in his vision. He learned that any meaningful quest will be challenging but with hard work and persistence, one can achieve their goals. 
Jia Dang launched a 100 Days of Public Rejection project where he made bold requests to strangers and recorded their responses. Though rejection was uncomfortable, he wanted to desensitize himself to it. His requests started simple but got progressively bolder. Through this experiment, he gained confidence and learned that rejection often comes with hidden benefits. The act of continually putting himself in uncomfortable situations despite failure was empowering. In summary, the passage highlights how self-reliance means having belief in yourself and your dreams, even when others do not. It means facing fears and challenges head-on through action and hard work. Though the road may be difficult, self-reliance gives one the freedom to pursue meaningful goals and the confidence and perseverance to see them through. Here is a summary, look within yourself first for solutions to problems. Love yourself and know you'll be okay no matter what. Be comfortable with silence. Follow your own path, not what others tell you to do. Know yourself and have a purpose. Be able to handle difficult situations on your own. Be self-reliant and independent. Define what you need to do yourself. Trust yourself to do what you commit to doing. If you can't rely on yourself, no one else can. Being blind takes a lot of practice and time to learn necessary skills to become self-reliant. Do things that fulfill you, even if others don't believe in you. Otherwise, you'll always wonder what if. You must believe you can achieve your goals, even if no one else does. Overcoming obstacles and setbacks is possible if you still believe in yourself. Doing things others say you can't do is motivating. Life is risky. People will judge your actions based on the outcome, even if the outcome isn't always in your control. Here is a summary, Sasha Martin felt stuck in a routine in Tulsa, Oklahoma with her young daughter. She wanted to bring more culture and adventure into her life. She came up with the idea to cook meals from every country in alphabetical order over 195 weeks. This allowed her to learn about different cultures through food. At first, Sasha's husband Keith wasn't thrilled with the idea. But he agreed to support her and help document the project. Their daughter Ava also participated. As Sasha cooked her way through the alphabet, she did extensive research on each country's cuisine. She played music from each country and invited friends over. Sasha had some serendipitous encounters, like meeting a man from Bulgaria who gave her recipe tips and a woman from Finland who helped her make a traditional sweet bread. The project allowed Sasha to reconnect with her love of travel and experience other cultures, even while staying home in Tulsa. Her family and community benefited from exposure to new foods and customs. The summary shows how you can have an everyday adventure by challenging yourself with new experiences, learning and growth, even without leaving home. Sasha's quest inspired others and brought more diversity to her city. Here is a summary, Sasha, a woman with a degree in culinary arts, undertook a quest to cook meals from every country in the world. Over three years, she and her family tried foods from different cultures and learned to understand them. Sasha's vision expanded, and she began giving talks to share her message of cultural understanding through food. Her young daughter Ava grew up exposed to many world cuisines. Sasha's project was meaningful because it had the characteristics of a quest. A clear goal, cook a meal from each country measurable progress, they marked off countries on a map as they went a sense of mission, Sasha wanted to spread a message of cultural understanding required effort, it took work to research and prepare meals from so many places other examples of quests include, Mark Henkenbauer jumped into 168 lakes in Glacier and Waterton Lakes National Parks over 10 years to raise money for charity. Ali Terrell and her boyfriend visited every basilica, special Catholic church, in the US to document them and share their history. Josh Jackson and his dad saw a baseball game in every major league stadium, even hitchhiking across the country for part of their quest. These types of quests can make life feel more meaningful and adventurous. Some people undertake life experiments to introduce more change and challenge into their lives, like visiting a museum on your lunch break or taking a new class. So in summary, undertaking a long-term quest to accomplish a clear goal, especially one that provides a sense of mission, can lead to personal growth and life enrichment. Here is a summary of the passages, the author discusses pursuing an ongoing quest to visit every country in the world. This quest provides structure and meaning to the author's frequent travel. The author has a routine for planning and embarking on trips to multiple countries, often having to obtain visas at the last minute. The constant travel and navigating different cultures has made the journey itself feel like home. On the 100th country visited, Sri Lanka, the author initially naps for too long upon arriving. To adjust to the time change, the author stays up all night exploring the beachfront and working on a writing project. The author reflects on reaching this milestone of 100 countries with many more still to go. The passages illustrate how deliberately choosing a long-term quest or challenge can provide purpose and push one outside of a routine. The quest shapes how the author lives and travels. 
Completing it will require persistence over an extended period of time. The narrator met a 21-year-old man named Nate Thom who was planning to walk across the entire United States from Maine to San Francisco. At first, the narrator was skeptical about whether Nate would actually go through with it. However, Nate was committed and started his journey as soon as the weather warmed up. The first few days were exciting and tiring for Nate as he adjusted to walking long distances every day. He had a tough moment early on and questioned why he was doing the walk but regained his motivation after some self-reflection. Nate eventually settled into a routine and met many people along the way who provided encouragement and support. In the end, Nate said that although the idea of walking across the country seemed crazy, the actual execution was straightforward, he just had to wake up and walk every day. The narrator received some criticism that visiting every country was easy and just required enough time and money. At first, the narrator was upset by this comment but then realized there was a valuable lesson. Careful planning and breaking down big goals into smaller steps were key to the success of the narrator's quest. The narrator estimated it would take 5 to 7 years and $30,000 to visit 100 countries. By solving problems one by one, the big goal seemed more achievable. The narrator approached the goal of visiting every country by starting at the end point and working backward. This involved visiting every continent, every country in Africa and Asia, small island nations in the South Pacific, and countries in conflict. Establishing sub-goals for each region helped the narrator stay motivated over the 10-year journey. Reaching each sub-goal, like visiting the stands in Central Asia, felt like a major accomplishment along the way. The narrator concludes that the time and money principle can be applied to any big quest or goal. Asking specific questions about what is required for success and breaking down the goal into smaller steps makes huge accomplishments seem more attainable. Careful planning and deductive reasoning are key. Here is a summary of what achieving your goal may require. Goal, write a book time, 9 to 12 months, to write first draft, plus 6 to 12 months, editing and publishing, equals 15 to 24 months total money, living expenses, $20,000 to $30,000, if taking time off work to focus on writing, editor, $5,000 to $10,000, if hiring a professional editor, cover design, $200 $500. If hiring a designer, printing, $3,000 to $5,000, for a small initial print run of 500 to 1,000 books, marketing, $3,000 to $10,000, for a book launch and promotional campaigns, other costs, lost income from time off work stress and uncertainty along the way sacrificing leisure activities and social time to make progress unknown, how much time the editing and revising process will actually take how much demand there will be for the book what critical reception the book may receive health or life challenges that could delay progress in summary writing and publishing a book is a long and difficult process that requires determination and sacrifice while planning is important getting started and making consistent progress will be key staying focused on the numbers like daily word count and milestones along the way can help provide motivation and keep you accountable however be open to adapting your plans and timelines as needed. The non-conforming approach is a good one. Start without overthinking it, make progress daily, get support from others, and stay flexible and open to where the journey may lead. The author discusses the popularity of bucket lists and life lists as a way to track goals and provide motivation. He shares examples of people who have created life lists to guide their activities and provide a sense of purpose. Nicholas Felton creates extremely detailed personal annual reports to track all aspects of his life from meals to sleep to location. For him, the reports make him more aware of his routines and grateful when he can break from them. Kristen Goldberg made a life list at age 16 with 23 items on it. 20 years later, she is still working to complete the original list. Some items were clearly from her teenage self, but others have remained lifelong goals. Completing the list has impacted her life and her teaching. AJ Jacobs pursued year-long quests to improve himself including reading the entire Encyclopedia Britannica and following all rules in the Bible. His quests provide focus and motivation. The key lessons are, we are motivated by progress and achievement. Checking things off a list feels good. A life list or quest can provide identity, purpose, and a focal point. It gives you a sense of purpose and a way to look at the world. While planning is important, at some point you need to start doing something to make progress. A life list helps provide that motivation to act. The summary touches on the key examples, lessons, and takeaways around using life lists and quests to provide motivation, purpose, and progress in life. The genre of modern-day short-term quest literature involves embarking on a focused quest or challenge for a limited period of time, often a year, and documenting the experience. 
the quest is meant to be personally meaningful and lead to learning and growth. A.J. Jacobs popularized this genre with his books The Know It All and The Year of Living Biblically. Since then, many others have written short-term quest memoirs, including Julie and Julia by Julie Powell, who cooked every recipe in Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking in a Year. A Simple Act of Gratitude by John Krolik, who wrote 365 thank you notes in a year. Dream On by John Richardson, who tried to improve his golf game enough in a year to break par. Not Buying It by Judith Levine, who didn't shop for anything but essentials for a year. Living Oprah by Robin Okrand, who followed all of Oprah's advice for a year. These quests are meaningful when the goal is personal growth, but less so when the primary motivation is publicity or a book deal. A quest requires uncertainty and sacrifice. Examples of short-term quests include 50 Dates in 50 States by Alicia Osterello, who went on one date in each U.S. state over the course of a year. Level Up Your Life by Steve Cam, who structured self-improvement goals like a video game, earning experience points and leveling up as he accomplished tasks. Life Lists, which outline long-term personal goals and dreams to pursue over your lifetime. Effective life lists have specific, measurable goals that inspire you. They mix adventurous goals with other life pursuits. And while thinking big, they remain realistic. The key characteristics of the short-term quest genre are a focused goal or challenge, often lasting around a year. The quest is personally meaningful and aimed at learning or growth. The experience is documented, often in a book or blog. There is an element of uncertainty and difficulty. Success is not guaranteed. The motivation is intrinsic, not primarily driven by publicity or commercial gain. Specific, measurable goals and milestones track progress and success. A mix of goals inspires and challenges the person, not just one type of goal. Thinking big while also remaining realistic. Dreaming beyond current limitations. The quest inspires others by documenting the journey. Here is a summary. Odysseus's journey and the Odyssey involved a lot of mundane details and waiting around that are often glossed over. Similarly, many real-life quests and adventures involve a lot of repetitive and monotonous work to accomplish the goal. As people gain experience in pursuing a long-term quest or goal, they build confidence and become more efficient. The author found visiting every country became easier over time as he learned how to cope with challenges and his options decreased. Others who have pursued long-term goals, like Phoebe Snetzinger seeing as many bird species as possible and Robin Devine knitting 10,000 hats, also found they were able to accomplish more than they first thought possible as they gained experience. Having concrete ways to measure progress toward the goal, like the author checking off countries on a list, helps provide motivation and a sense of accomplishment. Although the repetitive work involved in a long quest can be monotonous, that is precisely what makes the ultimate accomplishment so meaningful. In summary, experience and confidence gained over the course of a long-term quest can help make the work more efficient and motivate further progress. Although much of the work may be repetitive and monotonous, measuring progress and keeping the ultimate goal in sight provides a sense of meaning and direction. The author liked the routine and monotony of travel. An important skill for travelers is the ability to wait patiently. John Mad Dog Wallace is an obsessive marathon runner. Despite struggling in his first marathon, he signed up for another just two days later and has now run over 300 marathons in many countries. He seems driven by an internal motivation he can't fully explain. Martin Parnell is another committed athlete who sets challenging goals to raise money for charity. In 2010, he ran 250 marathons in one year, pushing through difficult conditions. Like Mad Dog, his motivation seems mostly internal and hard to pin down. Scott Young took on the challenge of completing MIT's entire computer science curriculum in one year through self-study. He studied five days a week for 12 hours a day, posting his progress and exam results publicly. Though he faced criticism, he completed the quest, gaining valuable skills and knowledge. His goal and deadline provided the structure and accountability to achieve an ambitious feat of self-education. In summary, the author and these extreme athletes are driven by an internal motivation to take on difficult challenges, push through adversity, and accomplish goals that provide a sense of purpose or mastery. Setting concrete goals, making progress visible to others, and establishing deadlines are strategies that can sustain motivation and support success. A tolerance for routine, repetition, and waiting are also helpful traits for long, demanding pursuits. The author discusses people who are motivated by the process of creating things, not just the end result or achievement. These people love making new things and sharing them with the world. They ask themselves what's next? When they finish a project. The author gives the example of Ron Ivitzer, a software engineer who continued working on an Apple project even after his contract was terminated. 
he and a colleague secretly worked long hours to complete the graphing calculator software, sneaking into the building and recruiting allies to help. After six months, their software shipped with 20 million new Macs. Avitcher loved the project so much he didn't want to stop, even without pay or an official job. The author says we should follow our passion and stay engaged in work we find meaningful. Ride the wave of inspiration and creativity for as long as possible. Some creative people, like Seth Godin, are able to generate their own inspiration. Godin is prolific, publishing a blog post daily, books frequently, and launching new ventures often. While not all succeed, his passion keeps him going. The key message is that effort can be its own reward when you love the work. Staying engaged and determined in the face of challenges leads to great outcomes. Follow your inspiration and make things to share with the world. Here is a summary, the key lesson is, if I fail more than you do, I win. Built into this notion is the ability to keep playing. If you get to keep playing, sooner or later you're gonna make it succeed. The people who lose are the ones who don't fail at all, or the ones who fail so big they don't get to play again. Seth Godin frequently writes about shipping, disseminating your work to the world. In his view, art doesn't exist until it's shared widely. He says, I've viewed my life for 25 years as one more opportunity to poke the box. One more opportunity to try something different. Tina Roth Eisenberg, aka Swiss Miss, makes and shares things from her co-working space in Brooklyn. She posts on her website five times a day and curates design finds from around the world. She started temporary tattoo and notebook businesses, and founded Creative Mornings, a global network of monthly talks. She gave up client work to focus on her projects full-time. Elise Blaha uses structure and routine in her creative life. She sets guidelines and boundaries to increase her creativity. She creates a new craft project each week and shares the details on her blog. She once set a goal to create 27 craft projects in 27 different materials for her 27th birthday. Routine and consistency help, not hinder, her creativity. Over a year, Seth Godone published 76,349 words across 365 blog posts and three books released the same day. Tina Roth Eisenberg shared 2,209 resources, hosted 972 creative mornings talks, and wrote 948 blog posts. Elise Blaha wrote 211 blog posts totaling 11,949 words and completed 52 different craft projects. Thomas Hawk published 11,697 photos, 176 of which were also published on his blog across 141 posts. Stand-up comics like Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld remain obsessed with honing their craft, even after huge success. Leno performed weekly at a small comedy club to assess what was working. Seinfeld flies around the country to do surprise shows at tiny venues to refine a tiny thing for the sake of it. Their dedication to the journey of telling jokes and connecting with audiences keeps their broadband open. Obsession drives them. Here is a summary. Stephen Kellogg is an independent musician who has released many albums and played over 1,200 shows. He said that it's better to be at the bottom of the ladder you want to climb than at the top of one you don't. He started as a boy with a dream and followed that dream, which made all the difference. The author felt the same way about writing. Even though his early work wasn't great, he was motivated by creating and sharing. Effort itself can be rewarding. To be creative, establish a routine that allows you to keep working. Some adventures are better shared. Tom Allen, a British cyclist, fell in love with Tenny in Armenia but had to decide between her and continuing his journey into Iran. He initially left but then turned around to be with her. Not all families understand or support quests and adventures. John Francis's father didn't understand his vow of silence and hoped he wouldn't come to Philadelphia. Even years later, he told John he had to talk and drive a car. John walked from Montana to Pennsylvania for grad school anyway. Alicia Ostarello's parents also didn't support her 50 dates in 50 states quest after a breakup. Though they eventually came around, she found that she had to support herself through the process. Juno Kim doesn't expect some family members to ever understand her travels, though others do. The Vogels were burned out teachers who sold everything to bike around the world as a family. They had each other's support through challenges and bonded over the experience. The story shows that some adventures are best shared with people who understand you. The key lessons are, follow your dreams and inclinations, even if you start at the bottom. Share adventures with people who understand and support you. Don't expect everyone, even family, to understand. But find support from those who do. You can accomplish a quest through your own motivation and self-support. Shared experiences can bring people together in powerful ways. Here is a summary. John and Nancy Vogel are a married couple raising twin boys in Boise, Idaho. 
They have a history of big adventures, including living in Ethiopia and cycling through Mexico and the U.S. with their kids. Their biggest adventure was a three-year, 17,000-mile cycling journey from Alaska to Argentina with their twin boys. The journey was challenging, and Nancy nearly quit several times, but they persevered and completed the journey, setting a record for the youngest to do so. Tom Allen, a British man, fell in love with an Armenian woman named Tenny while on a solo cycling journey. They cycled together for a while, but eventually separated so Tom could continue his journey alone while respecting Tenny's family's wishes. Tom's journey became extremely difficult in Egypt and Sudan, where he got malaria, but he remained hopeful, knowing he had Tenny waiting for him. He ended his journey in Yemen, realizing he wanted to choose love over adventure. He returned to Armenia to marry Tenny, who joined him on future adventures. Key Lessons Find people who support your dreams, a dream can have multiple owners if perspectives align, overcoming hardship requires strong motivation. The author took a quick trip to San Marino, a small independent republic within Italy, as a stopover on the way to Africa. Though he usually spends more time in each place he visits, he wanted to visit the tiny country of only 30,000 people. Here is a summary, Howard Weaver was born in Alaska and began his journalism career at the Anchorage Daily News. After confronting threats from organized crime figures he was covering, he left to start an activist newspaper, The Alaska Advocate, with three friends. With limited funding, The Advocate staff worked for little or no pay to provide an alternative to the pro-business Anchorage Times. They used unorthodox tactics like setting off smoke grenades to expose false claims in The Times. However, their confrontational approach alienated potential advertisers and funders. The Advocate folded after two years. Howard returned to the Daily News, which had new ownership and resources. Over 13 years, he and his team built it into a serious competitor to the Times by improving news coverage and winning a Pulitzer Prize. As the Daily News readership and credibility rose, the Times declined due to poorer quality and service. The competition between the Daily News and Times to shape Alaskans' views represented two competing visions, the Times' pro-big oil stance versus the Daily News' more balanced and locally focused journalism. Through perseverance and a commitment to the truth, Howard and his team at the Daily News ultimately prevail. The summary highlights Howard Weaver's journey from an idealistic young journalist confronting threats to build an activist newspaper, to a determined leader who helped transform the Daily News into a Pulitzer Prize-winning paper that overtook its main competitor. His story shows how perseverance and a commitment to the truth and local community needs can prevail over establishment interests. Overall it's an inspiring tale of a rebel who found his cause and ultimately triumphed. Howard Weaver led the Anchorage Daily News to victory over the Anchorage Times in a newspaper war in Alaska. The Daily News focused on truth-telling and serving ordinary Alaskans, while the Times ignored social problems and favored business interests. The Exxon Valdez oil spill showed the difference in the two papers' approaches. The Daily News covered it extensively, while the Times downplayed it and said it would be cleaned up quickly. The Times eventually collapsed, and the Daily News prevailed. Miranda Gibson protested industrial logging in Tasmania by living in a tree for over a year. She brought attention to the cause and halted logging in the immediate area, though her goal was broader, permanent change. Her lonely protest showed what she thought was worth living for. Helene Van Donung, a wildlife vet, has campaigned to get hunters to switch to non-lead ammunition to prevent lead poisoning in bald eagles. Though it's difficult, she pursues it as her personal quest because maybe people just don't know there's a better way. Stephanie Zito's hashtag Give10 project involved donating $10 a day for a year to different charities and causes, then writing about them. Though inexpensive, it took work to find 365 charities and causes to support. The project challenged her own discouragement with the non-profit world. In summary, the stories show people who pursue long-term change through truth-telling, raising awareness of important issues, and direct action and support for good causes. Though the work was often lonely, difficult, and required real sacrifice, they persevered because they believed in the importance of their causes. Here is a summary, the quest to produce the Gothic Symphony in Brisbane was an immense undertaking that spanned over 20 years. Gary Thorpe, a classical music station manager, spearheaded the effort after seeing a performance of the symphony in London. However, the coordination required to put on such an elaborate production with hundreds of performers proved extremely difficult. Gary and his team failed in their first four attempts to produce the Gothic Symphony. Each failure required starting over to find new performers, secure funding, and book a venue. Gary refused to give up on his vision despite facing skepticism and being told it wasn't worth the effort. The long process of working towards such an ambitious goal required loving the grind. It was tempting for Gary and his team to quit when facing setbacks and failures. However, 
continuing to make progress, no matter how small, was key. While Gary needed a team to accomplish the goal, he served as the tireless leader and visionary that kept the quest going year after year. After over 20 years of work, Gary and his team were fully committed to seeing the project through. They had come close to accomplishing their goal several times, but faced roadblocks that forced them to start over. Ultimately, their perseverance and refusal to give up in the face of immense challenges allowed them to achieve their quest. The summary highlights the following key points, the Gothic Symphony quest spanned over 20 years of work. Gary Thorpe spearheaded the effort to produce the symphony in Brisbane. The immense coordination required led to four initial failures. Loving the grind and making continual progress was key. Gary needed a team but also served as the determined leader and visionary. After over 20 years, Gary and his team were committed to seeing the quest through. Their perseverance allowed them to ultimately achieve their goal. Here is a summary, after 28 years of trying, Gary Thorpe finally managed to organize the largest symphony performance in Brisbane's history. However, just as everything was coming together, the venue managers called to cancel the booking. Gary couldn't convince them to change their minds, so he sent the rest of his team to plead his case while he anxiously waited. After 40 minutes, they emerged with the thumbs up, the booking was back on. With hundreds of performers across four choirs and a large orchestra, rehearsals were challenging. But they persevered, and the performance finally happened after nearly three decades of work. Gary had funded most of the $280,000 cost himself over the years, in addition to his day job at a radio station where he promoted ticket sales. His persistence and belief in the project, even when no one else did, ultimately paid off. The summary shows Gary's unwillingness to give up on his 28-year quest to put on this performance, and how he was eventually rewarded for his determination and financial sacrifice. Though at times it seemed the performance would never actually happen, he found ways to overcome each obstacle. Here is a summary, Rathon runner Kip Lidden set out to run 50 marathons at a pace under 3 hours each. As others examined his claims, something seemed wrong. Lidden would start late, disappear for over an hour during the race, then finish at the front with different clothes. Allegations were made that Lydon exaggerated or fabricated many of his race times and accomplishments. He even invented an entire fake marathon, the West Wyoming Marathon, complete with a website and reviews. Lydon's story shows the dark side of quests, when you can't achieve your goal but feel pressure to claim victory. His unrealistic time-based goal likely led him to start cutting corners and eventually fabricating entire races. In contrast, Matt Krause walked across Turkey over six months to challenge himself. His slower pace allowed him to fully experience the journey. The hospitality he received, like free meals and places to stay, showed him the generosity of strangers. Looking back, his old life and job seemed so far away. Gary Thorpe spent 28 years trying to produce Havergal Bryan's Gothic Symphony. A week before its debut, worries of disaster remained. But the performance was a triumph, receiving standing ovations and international acclaim. Such enormous quests are pursued not because they're easy but because they're hard. Thorpe achieved what London, Berlin and New York couldn't in 30 years. The middle of a quest can be the hardest, but don't stop if you still believe in your goal. Saving just a little money each day can enable you to go anywhere. If your quest relies on external recognition, make sure you have enough internal motivation. Here is a summary, Mark Boyle attempted to walk from England to India without spending any money, relying on the kindness of strangers. His quest quickly fell apart after leaving England as he struggled to communicate his mission and was seen as a beggar. He ended the journey after only a month, showing that it's best to fail quickly and learn from your mistakes. It's important to distinguish between true failure and minor setbacks or changes in direction. Many successful businesses go through pivots or transitions, so ending a project to start a new one isn't necessarily failure. The odds of success go up if you plan properly and learn from mistakes. When deciding whether to continue or quit a difficult project, consider your motivations, long-term happiness, ability to create rewards, and engagement of others. If motivations have changed and quitting won't hinder happiness, it may be best to move on. The author discusses frequently making mistakes while traveling, like double booking flights or missing flights entirely. While these disasters were stressful, approaching them with a problem-solving mindset allowed the situation to be remedied. Choosing your reaction to mistakes and setbacks can mean the difference between panic and figuring it out. Don't be afraid to ask for or accept help from others. Many people want to contribute to meaningful projects, so being open to help and collaboration can help combat loneliness and make the work more sustainable. The key is finding the right level of self-reliance balanced with community. In summary, the main lessons around misadventures and failure are, fail quickly and learn from mistakes, 
distinguish between failure and setbacks, consider motivations and happiness when deciding to continue or quit, choose to approach disasters with a problem-solving mindset, and be open to collaboration and help from others. With the right mindset, mistakes and misadventures can become learning experiences rather than true failures. Here are the main points summarized. As you make progress toward a small goal, the bigger vision expands. What you set out to do often evolves into something more significant. People are motivated by achievement, process, or a belief in daily adventure. Achievement motivated, one to accomplish something measurable. For example, visiting every location of a restaurant chain. Process motivated, focus on the step-by-step -step progress. For example, training a horse through daily checklists or cooking a meal from every country. The end result is secondary. Belief in daily adventure, simply seeking out new experiences each day. The journey itself is the motivation. When you look back at the start of a quest, your early views often seem naive or simplistic. You gain wisdom and perspective from the experiences. Much of the challenge comes from managing your own expectations. Being open to different ways of life and changes outside your control. Don't let others dictate how you should travel or pursue your goals. Create your own path. In the end, you can't change the world but you can change yourself. The quest leads to self-transformation. Here is a summary. Seeing progress helps motivate people to continue on long and challenging quests. Both Nate and Matt undertook walking quests across countries, but Nate focused more on enjoying the process each day while Matt was motivated by achieving the end goal. The key is finding the right balance of appreciating both the process and the outcome. Undertaking a long quest inevitably leads to personal changes, gaining independence and confidence. Completing difficult challenges and overcoming obstacles builds self-reliance and self-assurance. Maturing and gaining a deeper perspective. Listening more, being less reactive and judgmental, and developing a more fluid sense of identity are signs of maturation. Expanding your vision. Initial goals that once seemed challenging may start to seem small. Connecting with others and wanting to inspire people beyond yourself are signs of a growing, group-minded vision. Don't settle. Be willing to change course if needed to achieve your goals. As the quote says, if you don't like the menu, leave the restaurant. If you're not on the right path, get off it. Staying flexible and open to change is key. Here is a summary, the author draws parallels between ancient mythical stories and modern quests. There are common elements like a wise guide, allies, difficult trials, and mythical objects. Unexpectedly, many old stories end abruptly without a clear resolution. The story of Jason and the Argonauts is used as an example. Jason is a prince who is stolen as a baby and raised by a wise man. When he learns of his true identity, he sets out to reclaim his throne. The king sends Jason on a dangerous quest to get the Golden Fleece as a stalling tactic. Jason gathers heroes and builds a ship to undertake the quest. However, the story ends abruptly without describing whether Jason completes the quest or claims his throne. The ending is unexpected and without resolution, which is common in old stories. The key lesson drawn is, make a plan for the next step. Since many old stories end abruptly, the implication is that you need to think about what comes after completing your quest or task. You need to plan the next steps to fully resolve the story. Here is a summary, the story follows Jason and the Argonauts as they sail through treacherous waters in search of the Golden Fleece. They face many dangers and challenges along their journey, including murderous women, giants, winged creatures, magical rocks that smash ships, fire-breathing bulls, and warriors that spring from dragon teeth. With the help of Medea, Jason completes the necessary tasks, steals the fleece under cover of night, and escapes with Medea. After facing so many trials over 12 years, the ending of the story feels abrupt. The author says many more adventures awaited Jason. While some of those adventures were heroic, others were tragic. But the future was the future. This pattern of exciting build-up and unsatisfying ending is common in stories, video games, movies, and real-life quests. The author reflects on completing a quest to visit every country, and the challenges of explaining the experience to others and adjusting to life after the quest. He recommends focusing on sharing a few engaging stories rather than trying to sum up the entire experience. He also recommends reflecting on the journey and everything that has been thought and felt. Coming to the end of a long quest can be overwhelming. The key ideas are, quests often have abrupt or unsatisfying endings after a long build-up. It's hard to summarize complex experiences for others. Share stories instead. Reflecting on the journey and process can help in adjusting to life after a quest. Ending a meaningful quest can be an overwhelming experience. After months of traveling, Alicia struggled to adjust to her demanding new job. The routine felt tedious and prevented her from processing her recent experiences. 
she felt like the character Milo from the Phantom Tollbooth, who was diverted from his chosen path by mundane tasks. The lesson is not to forget to reflect before jumping into something new. Scott Young missed having a big goal after spending a year mastering MIT's computer science curriculum. He decided to spend a year learning several new languages without speaking English. Setting a challenging new goal after accomplishing an intense one can help provide purpose and stimulation. The characters of Brooks Hatlin and John Stuart Mill lacked purpose after achieving their life's goals, leading to depression and thoughts of suicide. In contrast, Howard Weaver had a new crisis of purpose after accomplishing his goal of defeating competition at his newspaper. He struggled with his newspaper's new direction and eventually left, showing that accomplishing goals often leads to new questions about identity and purpose. Benny Lewis and Shannon O'Donnell adopted worldviews and habits from different cultures in their travels, feeling more like world citizens. However, their new perspectives were sometimes alienating when interacting with people back home. Shannon realized her intense illness during her travels was a setback, not a sign she should pursue a traditional life. Those who have intense life experiences and accomplish big goals may find they have leveled up in life and daily routines now feel boring or repetitive. Being told they are now in the real world or real life implies their experiences were somehow false or less valid. But life's meaning is derived from what one makes of it. In summary, big life experiences often lead to struggles in adjusting to more routine circumstances again. But new challenges and perspectives help provide a sense of purpose. Life's meaning comes from how one shapes experience. Here is a summary, completing a quest can feel bittersweet. While achieving the goal is thrilling, ending the journey can also feel sad or annoying as the quest gave life meaning and purpose. The author felt a mix of emotions upon arriving in Norway, the final country to visit after 10 years of travel to every country. While happy to complete the goal, it also meant the end of the journey. The author held an end-of-the-world party in Norway to celebrate completing the quest with friends and readers. Although the journey started as a solo adventure, it had evolved to become about community. Returning home, the author reflected on how some places remained largely unchanged over the years, even as his own life had transformed. Hong Kong and Bangkok felt familiar yet different. Ultimately, there was nowhere left to go. The journey that had spanned hundreds of pages was over, with no more visas to apply for or plane tickets to buy. The quest had come to an end. The end of a quest is bittersweet, but it allows for new beginnings. While a chapter closes, the journey continues in new forms. That's a high-level summary and analysis of the key ideas events and reflections discussed in the finale of the book. Please let me know if you would like me to explain or expand on any part of the summary. Here's a summary, the quest isn't just a study of what other people have done. The core message is that a quest can bring purpose and meaning to your life, too. Why pursue a quest? Because each of us in our lives is writing our own story, and we only have one chance to get it right. For example, Alicia Ostarella recovered from a breakup by going on 30 dates in 30 days. She said, this is my story. No one can take it from me. And that is what has made everything entirely worth it. Phoebe Snetzinger was diagnosed with cancer at age 50 but lived to 68, spending much of that time bird watching around the world. Despite health issues, she went on a final trip to Madagascar to see rare birds. Tragically, she died in a van accident on that trip. But she had no regrets, writing, if I had spent my life avoiding any and all potential risks, I would have missed doing most of the things that have comprised the best years of my life. Lessons from these quests, unhappiness can inspire new beginnings. Adventure is for everyone. There's a quest for you. Follow your passion. Live aware of your mortality. Not everyone needs to support your dream, but you must. Count the cost before starting a quest. Progress and achievement motivate us. Choose which monotony you'll endure. The effort is the reward. Share some adventures. Misadventures build confidence. Start small, and the bigger vision will come. Quests don't always end neatly. Savor them, then start anew. The stories show that a quest can give life deep meaning. While risks and hardships come, the rewards of living fully, following your passion, and crafting an extraordinary story are worth it. A quest is for anyone open to adventure and willing to begin. Pursued a career as an independent musician after leaving behind a traditional life in South Korea. Became an advocate for female Asian travelers. Self-discovery quest. Created Science House and a series of mystery jars. Academic quest. Found a cure for a rare blood disorder. Activism quest. In progress. Walked across Turkey, ending at the Iranian border. Exploration quest. Completed. Trained an untrainable horse. Athletic quest. Completed. Mastered the art of stand-up comedy. Creative quest. In progress. 
Cooked a meal from every country in the world. Creative quest. Completed. Captured the 1989 Rio Grande Heritage Unit train on camera, among others. Documentation quest. Completed. Traveled through Southeast Asia with her 11-year-old niece. Exploration quest. Devoted his life to mastering the preparation of sushi. Creative quest. Completed. Went on 50 dates in all 50 states. Relational quest. In progress. Ran 250 marathons in a single year, among other quests. Athletic quest. Completed. Moved to Israel and hiked the National Trail. Exploration quest. Established a community focused on ultra running. Athletic quest. Completed. Mastered the art of stand-up comedy. Creative quest. Completed. Created a foundation that offers healthcare access to low-income children in India. Activism quest. Completed. Set the world record for the most sighted birds. Exploration quest. Completed. Visited every basilica in the United States. Exploration quest. In progress. Produced the world's largest symphony performance. Creative quest. Completed. Became an advocate for non-lead ammunition. Activism quest. Completed. Bicycled from Alaska to Patagonia with their twin 10-year-old sons. Exploration quest. Completed. Set the world record for running marathons in the most countries, 100 plus. Athletic quest. Completed. Fulfilled every goal on his late wife Megan's life list. Self-discovery quest. In progress. Led an epic battle to return Alaska's newspaper to the people of Alaska. Activism quest. Completed. Book link. Click here.